Hello everyone, so today the decorator pattern. So let's say you have entities that you can't change, you can't modify their behaviors, their methods, because maybe it's too sensitive to change them or maybe you don't even have access to them to modify them. So the decorator pattern allows you to add, to create new behaviors and attach that to them. So it's also called the wrapper pattern. You can hear that as well. Um, I think it's very useful and elegant. So let's see first how we can implement it in Go. And then we will discuss pros and cons, any caveat of that pattern at the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. So then I understand that you have interest for those kind of video and I can make more okay so let's create a new module we will call it um, decorator so inside that module let's have our main uh, function and then Let's create another module called third party. So let's imagine that module is written by a third party, like you can find a library on GitHub or something external that you can't um, modify yourself. So here, let's create an interface called um, interface soldier. So I know that in Go, we avoid to name interface with interface with the prefix interface but just for the sake of simplicity and academic purposes i'm gonna call that interface interface soldier so that interface has two methods so one is attack written in an int and then defense returning an int okay and then that third party library also declare a struct so that struct is called basic soldier and I can just use my ID shortcut to implement uh, interface interface soldier so you can see that the first method will return one attack return one and then defense return one as an int so we have a basic soldier and its interface so from now on we are not allowed to change that uh, third party. Oh, let's just add um, just a display logging method. So just a function called display and display stats of a soldier. And it's only displaying interface soldier. So we will print the attack and the defense of a soldier. So attack with a number and then defense with a, a number like that so then soldier attack and then soldier defense okay so um let's try it out we declare a basic soldier so i'm invoking my third party library so basic soldier and then invoking the display stats function by just passing the basic soldier. And if we run that, you can see the soldier stat attack one, defense one. So that's our third party. So we won't touch that um, code anymore. And now let's create our first decorator. So a decorator, I want a soldier with a sword. So you probably see where I'm going. So I want to gear up that basic soldier with a sword to increase its attack, basically. Right, so this is the recipe of a decorator pattern. So my I'm declaring a struct, which is my decorator or my wrapper. And I'm encapsulating a soldier an interface soldier and i'm also implementing that interface so i just use my id shortcut to implement that interface with 
attack int and defense int so the attack method will just return the the soldier i'm embedding in and just return increasing by 10 and then the defense will just simply return the defense of whatever the soldier we are encapsulating so then if we declare in the main program a soldier with a sword so we can use our decorator and then the soldier we are encapsulating is just a basic soldier we declared line 6 and then we can invoke our display stats so then you can see that our soldier with sword has attack 1 plus 10 11 and then still a defense of 1 so this is our first decorator this is the decorator pattern in action so very simple and now let's declare another decorator to see how you can compose decorator with them with multiple of them so same principle we declare another struct called soldier with shield and then it's wrapping a soldier an interface soldier same again i'm uh, i'm invoking my id shortcut to implement my interface soldier so here you see where i'm going again so i'm um, let's say a shield is quite heavy so i want to penalize my attack i can say attack minus six and then a shield will increase my defense obviously so whatever is the soldier defense plus a bonus you can say a bonus of 20 for instance okay so that's our second decorator so if i just create a simple soldier with a shield from a basic soldier so i can just build a soldier with shield which is encapsulating our still our basic soldier and then invoking our display function so you can see soldier with shield we run our program so you can see our third soldier is one minus six so minus five of attack and then one plus 20 21 of defense so that's a soldier with shield so you can see very quickly we just provided two extra the behaviors for um, soldier so we created kind of two new classes so lastly i want to show you how to compose um decorators right so we have a soldier with a shield wrapping a soldier with a sword wrapping a basic soldier so we call that soldier a soldier with a shield with a sword so if we display it you can try guessing the result of that soldier so attack 5 which is minus 6 plus 10 plus 1 defense 21 which is plus 20 plus 1 which is just 20 plus 1 actually so you can see how you can compose decorators okay let's discuss pros and cons of that um, design pattern so let's start with the good things first so you saw that I didn't touch at all the third party I declared at the beginning of the video and I just kept adding extra behaviors on existing services so that's very useful if you're dealing with external IPAs libraries that you don't have access so it keep intact those services and you can add extra behaviors on the top of them um, second point it can be runtime behaviors so in our example the fact that you're mounting a sword or a shield on a soldier that could be runtime so let's say your program is a dungeon and dragons program so you can have events where you need to mount uh, a shield a certain type of shield a certain type of sword so it can be runtime so it's very powerful it's not it's not 
similar to the builder pattern that you saw in the other videos those are more gear up for runtime um, third point the composition that you saw that we could uh, easily build a soldier with a shield and with a sword so that's really easy to do um, fourth point which is really important it's easy to test so assuming your um, the APIs you're using the libraries you're using the third party is well built you could mock it so then it's very easy to test your new behavior in isolation you're actually it's diff it's really easy to test them separately um, and thoroughly which is actually my fifth point where your decorator are developed and tested in isolation so let's say so in our example it's just a sword and a shield right but in real life example decorators can be completely whole services so you could have a team working on one of the a decorator and another team working on on the other one for instance um so now the bad things so composition is really cool but the order matters so in my example not so much because at the end of the day just minuses or pluses on uh, integer but let's say it's like database transactions or mutable effect where the order the the, the composition order matters of the decorator in which order you put them so then they will have effect stacked effect um, second point still on the composition let's say I want to remove in so in my example I was putting a sword in a shield a decorator sword in the decorator shield but what happen if I want to remove my sword decorator I want to replace it so you need to think of that when you build program with a lot of decorators um, third point it's more cosmetic cosmetic point so you can see it's it can be it can be ugly I'm not that much bothered but it just like struct embedded in struct embedded in struct so it's not as nice and elegant as a builder pattern that you saw previously where you can just chain with uh, like with a sword with a shield with boots and so on and so on but they are not intended to be used in the same way so if you want a refresher I invite you to watch the builder pattern okay so that was the decorator design pattern so I hope you enjoyed um, very useful to know definitely a classic uh, in interview or even in real life we used it a lot so um, if you enjoy like and subscribe so then I know you like this kind of videos and I can make more and um, happy coding